Hello and welcome back to another video today here again on Forza Horizon 5 to test out another brand new car pass car. This week, the rather boring Audi TT RS. Which, given we've had these kind of things the previous three weeks, we ignore that, that's not that interesting, but these three brilliant cars the last three weeks, this is a slight disappointment, especially considering we've got an Audi TT and we're getting the new Golf, or a new Golf, in the next bits of car pass. So essentially next week's car pass car is the same car as this. Anyway, here it is. Uh, let's go and grab it and... Ah. I was about to say we've managed to get it without restarting Forza. Right. So, after, well, restarting the game didn't work, so restarting the console did work. Anyway, we have now got the car, which means we need to pick an colour. Usually I'd pick yellow, but it looks very odd in this game. So I think I am just going to go for the standard blue um, for now. Those wheels look too big and those tyres look too low profile. Uh, looks a bit silly. Anyway, let's choose that. So yeah, here it is. It's effectively a Coupe Golf. It's the TT or a Coupe A3, I suppose, is more accurate. But the A3 underneath is a Golf. Anyway, so yes, it is a 2018 Audi TT RS, this new one. Previously in the game, we've got the 2015 TTS and the 2010 TT RS, uh, both based on, well, I think the the previous one, the previous S, is this same third generation. The 2010 car is a second generation, and obviously first generation's been around since 98, and we don't have any of those in here anymore. Interestingly, Forza seems to have rounded the figures up for the horsepower up to 400 when the internet says it's 394, and the weight is sitting at 1500 kilos exactly, which I find slightly hard to believe. It is at 748 PI, and as I said, it's based on underpinnings from the Golf, which... We're getting a 2018 Golf, I believe it's 2018, um, but it's definitely the same generation as the first next Car Pass car uh, in Series Season 4, whatever we're up to. Um, so we're effectively getting the same car again, which is very odd when there's a newer Golf and TT, I'm pretty sure, now. So, yeah, bit of a weird one, um, but anyway, let's go and see what it's actually like to drive. There is a horrendous panel gap here. What is going on? You can see it from there. That is awful. A gift from Sean in a barn. I don't want that. These gift drops are starting to annoy me. Anyway, sound is nothing to be excited about. I feel like it's not actually very well modelled. Which is slightly disappointing given they just had to put a wing on the previous car they already had, basically. But yeah, all-wheel drive sports car is going to drive fairly well, isn't it? It's not a particularly interesting car. I mean, it will understeer a bit. It is an Audi, so that kind of makes sense. What about in here? I mean, it's exactly what you'd expect, really, isn't it? Quattro system. What's it like on the dirt? Not too bad. I like the fancy rev counter. Drive select. Start. Start engine stop. So yeah, not a very exciting car, but it is a new car. So going forward with these car reviews, instead of showing you bits and pieces of my rival's laps, 
Uh, I'm going to do a five lap race and then show replay footage of the best uh, lap as per your your guys vote um, when I put the poll up uh, on YouTube recently. Um, but yeah, as with the previous cars, they're going to have five laps and I have prior to recording this video taken the 2015 and 2010 Audi TTS and TTRS around. The 2010 RS did a 113.2 and is A class 707. The 2015 TTS is slightly faster, 111.6 uh, and is A class 724. Uh, and sitting just above those is the Toyota Supra, the new one, uh, A738, and that did a 111.4. Yes, with nine laps, but still, um, that is something to aim for. Uh, and I did also take a Z4 around because that's probably a closer rival to this than the Supra although it's convertible and the Super isn't, but that's at A752 and did a 1098. So yeah, we're approaching the end of the lap now and I am going to reveal to you that it was faster than the Supra um, at a 111238. So on the overall leaderboard, it comes in in 18th place out of the 26 cars I've taken round so far. Um, this of course being the 2018 RS 748. A, uh, PI uh, and it did a 111.238, uh, about two tenths faster than the Supra, which I said at the end of the lap it beat. Um, that was an A class 74, uh, 731 car. It did have more laps, so potentially it, the Audi should have beaten it by a bit more than that. Um, and it comes in behind the Z4, which is a few PI higher at 752 is a year newer, is 2019, and that did a 1098. So actually an impressive time from the Z4, given it's similar to the Supra underneath. Not They're not identical, but they're very, very close. So the Z4 was surprisingly fast, and yeah, surprisingly, uh, an RS TT didn't beat that. I would always imagine the Z4 as a slower car, um, but Forza's PI thinks um, differently anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it came in roughly where it should do, uh, but given the the TTS from 2015, which is essentially the same model of TT, but cheaper in reality, did a 111.6. Is it really worth having this, especially with those horrendous panel gaps at the front, which I'm hoping aren't there in reality? So I actually think, in general, it's not really worth it over the TTS, and it's not a very exciting car anyway. Um, yes, it's considerably faster than the 2010 TTRS, but it's eight years newer. It really should be. So, yeah, it kind of slotted in where it should do, but a little bit disappointing. It's not faster more by more than the, the TTS. Um, but anyway, let's go and throw some upgrades on it. Probably build it to... where's it sitting? So it's just below the middle of A class, so we'll build it to the top of A and see how it does. The only other A-Class car I've taken around the track is the Alpine A110 with a brilliant tune on it that's not my own. So let's see how close we can get to that after we've thrown some upgrades on. So as always, before I build it to the top or van category to go and lap it around the festival again, I am just going to check the usual engine swaps and body mods just to see if there's anything new or unique. Uh, not there's a couple of engines neither of which I'm going to do generally also with these I try and keep the drivetrain and the engine stock for the upgraded version uh, just to keep it sort of similar between the vehicles now we do appear to have oh interesting we have the the sort of optional um, Audi parts which you can actually go and have sort of retrofitted I don't think they were available at when the car came out, but you can go to an Audi dealership and have the sort of sport parts on. I can't remember what they're actually called. Audi racing or something. Performance parts or something. Which we appear to have, which do look quite cool. So I am actually going to... It lowers the PI, interestingly. But I am actually going to go for these, because these are... Well, we don't usually get options like this. It's kind of like having a, a black pack, isn't it? You can just sort of black out the front. Which does look a lot better, but there's still a horrendous panel gap in there. Which they really need to sort out. That is not really acceptable. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we can remove the wing or have the Audi Sport wing. I think I'm just going to go Audi Sport parts all round. They do look good. 
that texture behind the number plate is not happy until I add the... What is going on? Anyway, I want those, so... Do we have side skirts as well? Oh, we can just do, like, the whole... the whole package. We can even put a nostrily bit on. Excellent. Now we've done those, let's quickly whiz through the upgrades uh, and see what kind of thing we're looking at. So after some quick upgrades, I have brought the weight down quite substantially because, well, it's not a light car. Um, so to 12, 29 kilograms, kilograms, kilos, kilograms, <laughs> getting those confused. Anyway, uh, peak power is now up to 415, so we've increased 15 horsepower. Uh, and yeah, we've kind of widened the tyres. I haven't changed the compound because it was already on sport tyres. Uh, I think. It wasn't quite on semi-slicks, it was the one below that as standard. Um, and yeah, hopefully it'll have more grip. We've brought the track width out and stuff. So now time to find a suitable race livery to go with that pretty nice body kit and see how it compares to the Alpine around the festival. So I ended up going for yellow in the end with some nice black accents. Unfortunately with the TT, or with the many Audis, the mirrors remain silver which is a shame because they would look good in black with all the other black accents and carbon fibre bits. Um, but anyway, here, here we go uh, again, five laps, uh, and this is the best lap that I'm showing here. Uh, the time to beat from the Alpine is a 106.333, but that is an incredibly fast car, so I'm not expecting it to beat that. So the closer we can get, the better. Um, yeah, be interesting to see how the Audi does. Obviously, this is all-wheel drive. I think the Alpine is, because um, that tune had been changed. Um, whereas when I run these, obviously, uh, I don't generally change those kind of bits. Um, but yeah, generally it, it drove quite nicely with these upgrades. It just has that bit more power on the straights. Obviously, it's the first tune I've thrown on. It's not going to be anything massively fast. Um, but yeah, we're coming towards the end of the lap now. And yeah, rather unsurprisingly, it didn't beat the Alpine actually by quite a margin, if I'm honest. So yes, it really didn't do that well. It drops into seventh place. It is the only other A-class car I've taken around other than the Alpine, but it was nearly a second slower than that. Uh, yes, it's my tune, which I threw on very quickly, and that's a tune by a professional Forza tuner who tunes very fast things all the time. So it kind of makes sense. So really relatively speaking it's not actually that bad i mean it's nearly a second slower than that which sounds terrible but really i need to take some more cars around that have got my a class tunes on for it to be a competitive time um or for me to give a proper idea of whether this is actually any good or not uh we will wait and see what other people manage to get out of them but i think generally speaking audi tts aren't great in forza anyway so yeah what is the to say about the tt really it's an overpriced Golf with horrendous panel gaps and annoying silver mirrors that you can't repaint. Um, that isn't that much faster than the previous generation Audi TT RS and the TTS of the same generation as this. So there's not really much point to it. The only kind of redeeming feature is the cool aero bits you can put on it. But I don't think we can forgive that model, particularly that panel gap at the front there. I mean, how did they manage to get that that bad? So, yeah. I wasn't terribly excited for it, so it's not really disappointed me too much. I am pleased to see that it's got sort of unique aero bits on it. And, yeah, well, next week's Car Pass car is a Golf, which is basically the same car as this, but in hatchback form. Which hopefully won't have annoying silver mirrors and panel gaps, but it probably won't have the cool aero bits either, so that's not really terribly exciting. Um, but there we go. That is the new Audi TT. It is there in the car pass if you want it. It is at least a new vehicle, unlike some of the car pass stuff we're getting soon, which is a bit, well, even more disappointing, really. But yeah, kind of a, a mediocre car, like you'd expect and like it is in reality. But there you go. There is the 2018 Audi TT, which does look slightly better with the aero and the yellow paint. But anyway, that is going to be all for today's video, taking a first look at this week's Car Pass car. Um, we have just had the next four revealed, so I will be looking at those in the coming weeks, uh, the new ones. 
and some of the festival playlist cards that are new to the Forza franchise. Um, but for now, that is going to be all for today's video. So thank you very much for watching, and I will be back with the next video very soon. Thank you.